Hi, today we're going to look at saving templates um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a little while but before I go into that I just wanted to make an announcement I have actually uploaded a new um, product to my website which is a new mini course and I'll just bring that up now so if you did the um, distort art canvas um, or Corel distort tool if you watch that video and I'll put a link to that below in the description uh, if, in case you haven't um, I've actually created a course now to show how to digitize the whole flower so how to create the whole artwork and then including the petals and then to um, actually create the stitches so if you're interested in that um, it's on special for the whole of this month as a new year special and you can um, get that course for as little as $13 Australian so that's even less in US dollars so um, okay before I go any further we'll close that and get back to the topic at hand which is templates now a template is um, different to your printing templates for putting on your fabric. Um, the software templates are actually the settings for all the basic things in your software such as the stitch um, density, stitch spacings, if I right click on the object properties here, um, all these settings that are default in the software uh, one template and it's called the normal template so when you open your software the normal template opens with all these default settings but you can actually create your own templates and you might want to do that for a number of reasons you might want to for instance set up a template that has different stitch spacings and stitch lengths for some of the um, um, types of stitches you might want to set particular underlays so that you don't have to go in and reset them for certain designs. Another um, reason you might want to do it is if you've got a design that you want to change only one element of that design um, or just a couple of elements but there's a part of the design that you want to use often. Now you could just save that part of the design and then open that part of the design but if you save it or you could save it as a template and so today I'm going to save a template. So here I have a design that is a an in the hoop zipper pouch. So I've got my um, lines here placement lines for the um, where to place the zip I've got and also the size of the design stitches out so if I go into my color film up to the top here I've got the image hidden that I used but first of all I've got um, the shape of my pouch then I've got two placement lines that stitch in the same color so all of that stitches first and that is where to place my zip. Then I've got two straight lines to actually stitch the zip down and then I have another straight line which actually stitches the fabric in place for the bottom half of the pouch, so this lower part here. And then the actual design stitches, so this emoji design that I did, and then I have a stitching line to place the top part of the pouch, the fabric for the top part of the pouch. And I have a couple of placement lines for a, um, a little tab of ribbon to stitch in place. And then I've got the stitching lines for the actual pouch. Now, I may want to do another zipper pouch, but I might want to do it a different size. This one is very small. It fits in a 4x4 four four hoop if I bring a hoop in this is just that's the oval hoop let me just change that to the medium hoop which is actually 130 by 100 for bananas but um, as you can see it fits easily vertically in that space and it fits widthwise um, 
so if you have a 100 by 100 hoop, you could even fit this design in, but that's the best hoop in the Bonina hoops that works. Okay, but if I want to make a bigger zipper pouch, the stitch lines for placing the zipper basically are going to be the same width for every zipper pouch I make. So, because I'll use a standard size zipper. If I used a different zip, zipper that had d different width, then that would be a problem. But for your standard zips, or these lines are going to be in the right place. And I had to, I spent some time measuring to make sure I had those and testing to make sure I had those all in the right place. So it's that part of the design that I want to save as a template. So what I did was, I'll just get rid of that hoop again because it's distracting. I selected those elements of the design. So I don't didn't want to keep the actual shape of the pouch because I might make a totally different shape pouch altogether as well. So I selected the placement lines for the zip and I just held my control button down because not all of these are next to each other so I want the two placement lines for the zip they're selected the stitch down lines for the zip both of those they're selected and then the stitch down line for the bottom half of the pouch fabric and then in my in this case the design stitches and then I've got the stitch down line for the top half of the fabric. So I don't have that in the way while I'm doing the design. So, But I need that, I will need that element of the design in all my designs. As far as the little tabs for the placement of the ribbon tab, I may or may not put those in and they won't take long to do. So I'm not going to bother including those. And these are the actual pouch stitching lines which I won't need either because I may, as I said, do a different um, shape altogether for another zipper pouch. But I don't want to have to recreate these lines ever again. So I could copy those and, well, what I did was I copied those. So right, right click on the color film on one of the ones you've selected and just click on copy. I've already done that, so I'm not going to write at this moment. Um, and then I went to a new design and I pasted and my elements of that design are all here. Now the beauty of this is I can now group these together and if I have a bigger um, pouch that I'm digitizing, I can just elongate these by moving that center handle in the um, selection handles and they all stay straight and they all stay the same width apart so I can make that any length I like and I can digitize the outline of my pouch first and then just place this because I can move this to wherever I want on the screen so if I wanted to make a circular pouch let's just do one um, so I'll just click here I should have set this up to be an outline first and I probably didn't. No, I didn't. Um, and enter and if I hit, sorry, left click and enter, I'll get a circle and let me just change that to a an outline. And I'll, I can then decide where I want my zipper lines and I can move them to where I want them, say if I wanted them in the center of the circle and then I can just elongate them to fit. You need them to protrude a little bit past the outside of the circle. And I would align those all much better than that. So um, it would be very handy to be able to just open a template with this design in it. So let's just um, undo back to our um, stitches that we need for our template um, I can't undo because I've closed it and reopened so let's just I'll just delete this circle all right now I've got my um, zipper placement lines etc all there grouped together and I want to save that as a template so you can't just go to file save as or um, the save here you need to go file save as template 
and you'll see save as template here and you'll know you're in the right area because you've got a drop down menu down here for the type of file and the type of file is an AMT file and you can actually in version 8 you can save for version 8 or you can save for version 7 if you want to share this template with someone who has an older version of the software um, so the templates are stored in um, your program files Benina embroidery software 8 template and you need to, you can't change that you need your templates to be saved there so if you want to access that file for version 7 you'll need to copy the file here and insert it into the template folder of the version 7 software so we ha I've done a test here but normally when you first start you'll only have the normal template here and you need to give it a name so I'm going to call this one um, zipper pouch and save it now I can close the software and reopen it so next time you come to your software it will reopen as normal okay and so now we're back open again if we want to access that template all we do is go file new from template it's the second option down and the new from template dialog will open and that's where we can choose which template we want to use so we can go normal which wouldn't be very wise because you've already got a normal template in your software when you open it um, or you can choose from any that you've created so I'm going to choose that zipper pouch one and you can see here that it's got the fabric settings here and you can actually change those here um, I've done a quick tips video on fabric settings so but you can change that here if you want to before you open this template um, you can and it saved the fabric settings from the ones that I had set on the actual um, when I saved the zipper pouch template so that's what's come up but as I said you can um, actually choose to use fabric and then you've got options to go down to the drop down menu and if you've created a custom fabric that'll be in there as well um, the background you can change the background here that you'd like to work with as well um, but you could have saved the template with the background that you want to use when you're happy with what's in that dialog box just go OK and there is your zipper pouch so I could have saved this as an art 80 design and just opened it as an art 80 design but if you're going to be using it a lot and you don't want to go searching for the design and open the design etc then you can use the template but the more important use for it is probably um, if you want to set up your own fabric settings as I said your stitch parameters for your different fills um, for a particular style of digitizing you can do that you can also set your grid at a different size and so that when you save the template it will always open with that size grid so just about anything can be set on your template in fact you don't even need to have a design in it you can set all those things like grid um, hoop size the default hoop size and everything like that um, so that when you open your template you don't have to go through that process before you start digitizing now I could go ahead and digitize the other elements of this design and um, as I said you know if I want to I can um, select this and change its size I can move it around um, to suit the design so I hope you found that useful um, and hope you enjoy digitizing <laughs>